Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. After going just 6-7 in 2019, including losses to Florida International, Duke, and Louisiana Tech, Miami took a major step forward in 2020, going 8-3 largely thanks to the transfer of quarterback Derek King, whose health will be the difference between taking another step forward in 2021 or having yet another disappointing season under Manny Diaz. So again, guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert here to predict Miami's schedule and record for this upcoming college football season. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos. Hit that notification bell too so you don't miss out on any predictions from now until the beginning of the college football season in August. I promise you do not want to miss out on that. And I promise you do not want to miss out on our expert picks down in the description below over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Some of the best college football spread picks in the entire country for one of the lowest prices in the entire country. And now, for our five-year anniversary here on the channel, we are offering up our NFL spread picks. So do not miss out on those. Everything is over on thegridironexpert.com, the link down in the description. So let's talk some Miami football, guys. We mentioned at the beginning of this video that De'Eric King's health was going to be vital. And for anybody, you could say, well, of course your starting quarterback's health is going to be vital. If your starting quarterback goes down, your season's shot. Now, that's not always the case for every team out there, but it's certainly the case for Miami this year. Derek King tore his ACL and that bowl loss to Oklahoma State, and whether or not he can remain healthy, if he can return to form, because he had a fantastic 2020 season, is going to be huge. And whether or not Miami can contend and win the Coastal, or whether they're still middle of the pack right now. We take a look at their offense. Everybody's back. Practically everybody is back for Miami. And it starts with De'Eric King. He threw for over 2,600 yards, 23 touchdowns, just five interceptions last year. Also rushed for 538 yards and four touchdowns. He's a dual threat quarterback, we know that, and he was the major difference maker last year for the Hurricanes, whose offense sputtered for a long, long time. Under Mark Rick, certainly did in 2019 as well. Cameron Harris is back at running back, 643 yards, 10 rushing touchdowns in 2020. Four of their top five pass catchers are back from last year. That includes Mike Harley, had 799 yards, seven touchdowns last year. Includes Mark Pope as well. So De'Eric King has weapons all around him. A running back to take the edge off. Some fantastic pass catchers too. The difference maker too on offense is going to be Miami's offensive line. They allowed the fourth most sacks in the country in 2019, but improved in 2020, allowing a sack and a half less per game than they did in 2019. If they can improve a little bit more, first off, it's going to be huge opening holes for Harris, but it's going to be even better to give De'Eric King, more protection. The offensive line is still an area of concern, but they're getting there. Defensively, Miami returns nine starters. Yes, they lose Gregory Rousseau. Yes, they lose Jalen Phillips, both of them along that defensive line. But Bubba Bolden is back to lead the secondary. Was also the leading tackler last year for the Hurricanes with 74 tackles. Secondary will be the strength of the team, while the linebacking core, many could say, is the weakness and needs the most help, most improvement, after allowing 174.5 rushing yards per game. And that last game against, one of the last games against North Carolina left a pretty bitter taste in Miami's mouth. So we look at Miami, guys. They have all the talent in place. Manny Diaz is entering year three. We know he needs a big year. And when you look at their schedule, you can't help but say, dang, that's really, really favorable. That anything less than maybe nine wins would be a major disappointment for Miami in 2021. Because you look at this, guys. Yes, they open up the season against Alabama, but they do not have a true road game. A true road game until seven weeks into the season when they travel to face North Carolina. How favorable can you get? You can't get more favorable than that. The talent is there. The coaching staff is there. The schedule is there. What's Miami going to do with it? Well, they open up the year against Alabama in Atlanta. It's one of the most anticipated games of week one. And there are a lot of people out there that think Miami could pull off this upset over the Crimson Tide. Namely because Alabama lost so much. They lose Mac Jones. They lose Najee Harris. They lose Devontae Smith. They lose Jalen Waddle. They lose some guys on the offensive line. But what people are forgetting is that Alabama consistently reloads. They don't rebuild. They have Bryce Young in at quarterback. And that's the only thing that can maybe benefit Miami in this game is that they're facing a brand new quarterback 
and the Hurricanes' strength on defense is their secondary. But he has a very talented wide receiver in John Mechie. He could be one of the best duos in the SEC this year. And Alabama returns eight starters on defense. And that's the storyline that I think people aren't paying attention to. Alabama's offense could sputter at times in this season opener against Miami. But it's really going to be a matter of, one, is Derrick King healthy enough to play in this game? And two, can Miami's offense get anything going against an Alabama defense that allowed 19.4 points per game and just 113.1 rushing yards per game? I don't think Miami has much offensive success in this game. Every year, or a lot of years, Alabama plays in a neutral site season opening game. People are worried they could lose to whoever they play because they lost so much from the year before. And every year, Alabama dominates in that game. And I expect that to be the same on September 4th in Atlanta. Miami loses to the Crimson Tide. They bounce back, though. I do believe they beat Appalachian State. The Mountaineers landed a transfer quarterback in Chase Bryce, who was at Duke last year. And while the Mountaineers are certainly some belt title contenders, they're not going to have enough to come down to Miami and snag a win. So the Hurricanes get a win over the Mountaineers. And then they face Michigan State. And I love this matchup. I love the Power 5 out-of-conference matchups. They're so much fun to watch. It's a unique matchup. But you look at Michigan State what they're dealing with. Brand new head coach, too, and Mel Tucker, who did okay, mediocre, in 2020, worked with as much as he could considering the circumstances, but I will say this. These two teams were supposed to meet last year in East Lansing, and I was going to pick Miami to win that game. We did pick Miami to win that game. Of course, it was never played. I certainly believe now, with the game being in Miami, that the Hurricanes will win this game. The Spartans are struggling offensively. The only thing they've got going for them is a transfer QB and Anthony Russo from Temple, but the Spartans only averaged 18 points per game last year on offense. Their defense allowed 35.1 points per game. They lost all five of their games by double digits. The Spartans are still a ways away from contending, not just in the Big Ten, but just nationally too. Certainly just on to getting to a bowl game. They're going to struggle with that this year. So Miami, I think, takes advantage of a weak Michigan State team and wins big at home. They beat Central Connecticut State. No need to worry about that. So they've strung together three consecutive victories now, and they play Virginia on a Thursday night before they get their bye week. Last year, Miami beat the Cavaliers 19-14. 19-14. Virginia, of course, got a late score there, so it looked a little bit closer than maybe it was. Uh, but I expect this game to be won by more for Miami in 2021. So, yes, we are predicting them to beat the Cavaliers at home. Yeah, you look at Virginia, guys. They are going to improve. I think they do have what it takes to get to a bowl game in 2021. But they had the worst passing defense in the ACC last year. We keep harping that. I'm sure you're getting tired of hearing it. But they allowed 304.4 passing yards per game. You pair De'Eric King and his top receivers back against that secondary, which will improve, but maybe not that much, certainly not by the end of September, it's going to be a field day. Should be a field day for the Hurricanes at home on a Thursday night. If it was at Virginia, I'd say this could be a potential trap game because I hate those midweek games, but I'm not feeling it here. Miami should beat Virginia handily. Should be able to exploit that secondary. Miami's secondary should be able to shut down Brennan Armstrong, and the Hurricanes should win this game by double digits. They get their bye week going into the road game at North Carolina, and that's the big one, guys. You can make an argument that this is the biggest game on the schedule for Miami. It's the biggest game on the schedule for North Carolina because this game could very well determine who wins the ACC Coastal. There is no doubt in my mind that the top two teams in this division are North Carolina and Miami. So this game on October 16th very well could determine who most likely faces Clemson in the ACC Championship game. So you look at North Carolina. <laughs> well, first, I will say it's good that Miami's getting a week of rest prior to this game. Coming into the biggest game of the year with a bye week is huge. Getting that week of rest is huge. North Carolina does not benefit from that. But Miami last year lost to the Tar Heels in Miami 62-26. to they allowed 778 yards of offense to the Tar Heels. They allowed 554 rushing yards to the Tar Heels. And while I do not think that North Carolina can replicate those numbers, first off, Miami's defense will be better. Second off, North Carolina did lose their uh, running back duo of Michael Carter and Javante Williams. So while I don't think that's going to be possible, I do think that North Carolina wins this game. Getting the game in Chapel Hill for the Tar Heels is huge. It's huge. And I don't know if I'm seeing a, what, 36-point swing? A 36-point swing between 2020 and 2021. 
The Tar Heels are going to have a very deep and talented defense this year, especially in the secondary. The two solid secondaries here. But if I'm picking a quarterback to lead my team to victory, I'm picking Sam Howell over De'Eric King right now. I'm taking North Carolina's passing attack that averaged 301.4 passing yards per game last year, taking them over Miami's. No disrespect to the Hurricanes. But I think Mac Brown's offense is just a tad bit better than Miami's right now. Tack on, they're going to have home field advantage, and advantage I think is going to play such a major role in 2021, maybe bigger than we've ever seen before. And I do believe the Tar Heels get maybe the biggest win of their season on October 16th. Miami drops their second game of the year. It's going to be an instant classic, guys. I think it's going to be a lot closer. I do think it will be closer than the 62-26 beating we saw last year. And if it was in Miami, you could make the case that Miami wins the game. Revenge is certainly going to be on their mind. I don't like that it's in Chapel Hill for Manny Diaz, though. I do not like that. And I don't like that North Carolina is very deep, very experienced, very talented, and has a lot of key pieces coming back from last year's squad that made the Orange Bowl. So Miami drops that game. The beauty of this, guys, is that if you look at the remaining six games for Miami, they're all very, very favorable, and they should be favored in all of them. Should be favored in all of them. You can make a case that after North Carolina, their toughest game is at Pittsburgh. Maybe NC State. But after that, it's very favorable. We look at the NC State game. I'm going to give Miami a win here. They beat the Wolfpack 44-41 to last year. And I'm not just writing off Dave Doran and the Wolfpack, but I am saying that I'm looking at North Carolina State's defense, one that allowed 415 yards per game, one that allowed 29 points per game, and now they're coming to Miami. And I think Miami has one choice here. They have a choice to be hung over after the loss to UNC, or they have a choice to still continue to win the games, continue to try, because their hopes of a New Year's Six Bowl game are not dashed. But their only loss is coming to top 10 teams in Alabama and North Carolina. So I think they get a win over NC State, an offense that could test the Hurricanes with Devin Leary, Emeka Amezi, Bam Knight, Ricky Person, all of them can put some points up on the Hurricanes. But Miami's going to get the job done at home. They then travel to Pittsburgh. Yes, this is a major trap game. We've seen Pittsburgh upset Miami before. We've seen instant classics between these two in recent memories, in recent years. But again, I don't think Miami drops this game. At Pittsburgh, it's, it's going to be tough. And keep in mind that last year, 31-19 in favor of the Hurricanes wasn't their best performance, and they beat the Panthers without Kenny Pickett. So Kenny Pickett's going to be back. Maybe that accounts for another touchdown or so. So 31-26 last year. 31-19 in Miami. Now they're going to Pittsburgh. And really, the, the storyline that I look at in this game is Miami's offensive line has to hold up against Pittsburgh's defensive line. Pittsburgh ranked second in the country last year when it came to sacks per game. They had 4.18 sacks per game in 2020. If Miami, Miami's offensive line is still a little bit shaky and De'Eric King is constantly under pressure, Pittsburgh has the offensive talent, and we know they certainly have the defensive talent, to win this game. But one thing, two things really, that come down to this. First off, if Pittsburgh's defensive line does exploit Miami's offensive line, De'Eric King has the capability to extend plays, use his legs, and make something happen out of nothing. That's the beauty of having a dual threat quarterback. And the other thing is, quite frankly, I don't think Miami's offensive line struggles. I think they rise to the occasion at Pittsburgh. And they have just what it takes to win this game. And I think they get a couple interceptions off of Kenny Pickett, too. Look at the remaining of the schedule, guys. The last month of November, they faced four teams that all had losing records in 2020. Every single one of these teams had losing records in 2020. Mark them up for a win against Georgia Tech. I think a game where they'll annihilate the Yellow Jackets. I believe Jeff Collins' squad is getting there, but they're not there yet. Offense is getting there. The rushing game is getting there. And that's going to be the key, guys. Miami, Miami, they shut down Georgia Tech's run game that was averaging over 190 rushing yards per game last year. They shut that down, got it in the bag. I think Manny Diaz knows what he has to do. It's at home. They get the job done. They travel to Florida State. They beat the Seminoles 52-10 to last year. Do I see a 42-point swing coming for the Seminoles now? Absolutely not, even though the game is in Tallahassee. Absolutely not. Florida State's not there yet. They only return five starters on defense. They're still trying to work out their offensive schemes, whether it's Jordan Travis or Mackenzie Milton. Who knows? And quite frankly, who cares? Because it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. Miami will annihilate Florida State again, as I still think the Seminoles are a year or two away from just getting to a bowl game. They then play Virginia Tech. That's going to be the tougher game out in this final four-game stretch here is the Hokies. 
because I think they're still a top three team in the ACC Coastal. Last year, Miami beat them 25-24. to But again, I look at this and I say it's lucky that it's in Miami. They don't have to travel to Blacksburg. They don't have to travel to Lane Stadium. In Virginia Tech, while well, I think their defense will be stout, while well, I think Justin Hamilton is going to do a great job with them, eight returning starters on that side of the ball, I question Virginia Tech's offense. I have faith in Braxton Burmeister. I believe he'll get better week in and week out. I genuinely do believe that. But Derek King and this Miami offense certainly owns the edge over Virginia Tech's offense, even if they start to get hot towards the end of the year. And Virginia Tech's defense is not going to have enough to shut down this electric of an offense. Not this late in the season, not in Miami. And then they close out the year at Duke, and you don't have to say much about that. Duke lost to Miami 48 to nothing last year. The Hurricanes beat the Blue Devils 48 to nothing last year. And there's a very good case that this Duke team in 2021 could be worse than the Duke team that we saw in 2020. And that might be hard to believe for some, but it's not looking good for David Cutcliffe and the Blue Devils. Even though it's on the road, Miami gets another blowout victory and they clinch a double-digit win season. So we have Miami going 10-2, and and Hurricane fans, you have to be happy with that. Your only losses are to Alabama and Atlanta in a road game at North Carolina. Maybe you think you'll beat UNC. But let's take a moment to realize, guys, that if you beat North Carolina, you're 11-1, and you're in the ACC championship, and you are college football playoff contenders. I don't think the Hurricanes are that right now, but they are New Year's Six Bowl contenders, no doubt in my mind. 10-2 and will get them there. And De'Eric King, again, is going to be a major reason that they get there. The Hurricanes struggled in year one under Manny Diaz. They took a major step forward in year two. They're taking another major step forward in year three, a double-digit win season, and a chance to win a New Year Six bowl game. So, guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Also, make sure to hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any prediction videos from now until the beginning of the college football season. You will not want to miss any of them. And you're not going to want to miss out on our expert picks either. The link for that is down in the description below. It's over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. We have some of the best spread picks in the country for one of the lowest prices in the country, not just for college, but for NFL too. So make sure you go give that a look. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert.